You out there guys, this is Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft and this is a video review of the Nomad Woodland Airsoft site, not to be confused with Camp Nomad that we've already taken a look at. Now I need to point out this is a first impression video review, I'd never been to the site before, so I'm going to base everything I'm talking about in this review upon that day that I turned up and that day only. And so with that in mind, on with the review. So the site's located in Fenwick, which is about half an hour's drive away from Glasgow. The postcode for the site can be found in the description down below, and for me when I used it with the sat-nav it dropped me off exactly where I needed to be, however it didn't look like that at first glance. This is because it drops you off outside the equestrian centre. Now in order to actually reach the site from that point you need to drive through the car park for the equestrian centre, bearing left, take a left turn and head off to the woodland that's off to one side, park up in front of there and you should see the entrance to the safe zone. So as for the walk-on fee then, well if you're going for a half game day it's £10 and a full game day is £15. It should be noticed that doesn't include your lunch, um, that's only available on the full game days and that's an extra £5. But since it's the equestrian centre that's going to be doing the cooking for it, it looks like you're getting a decent meal out of it. There is a hire kit available as well, that's £30 that must be booked in advance. That includes an AEG 3000 rounds worth of ammo and full face protection. No mention of overalls though, so make sure you bring some clothes that you don't mind getting ditched. The safe zone was a fairly decent size, all the seating's covered as well and it doesn't feel like even on a busier day that there's going to be cramping issues, there seems to be space for everybody. There was also a shop on site, although a very small one, um, it was only selling the absolute basic airsoft supplies, I was able to get ammo from there, but don't go in expecting it to be a fully fledged shop, just the absolute necessities there. Um, as for the FPS, if you're using an AEG, FPS limits are 350, if you're using a DMR that is locked to semi-auto only, then 425 is the max FPS, and bolt action snipers are 500. It should be noted that they weren't actually running chrono tests on the day that I turned up, however I strongly suspect that this is because it was a half day that we turned up on and they were only expecting regulars, but there was no chrono test on the day that we appeared. So what were the staff on site like then? Well, when we turned up they were very welcoming, letting us all know what the plan was, the safety brief was delivered quickly to the point, and I have no complaints about how the games run either. Uh, one thing I particularly liked is how they were quite willing to give players a good kick up the arse in order to get them into the next game and get the next games going, so the downtime in between these games was absolutely minimum, which is why I think we managed to squeeze so many into the half day that we were there, so very appreciative of that. As for the players, um, normally when I do these reviews, um, I always say that the player base is decent because in my experience that tends to be how the sites are. You, airsofters tend to be decent wherever you go. However, I have to say that the people at this site went above and beyond. Like, we were made to feel incredibly welcome. They were really chatty, talking between the games. It was just, it was like we'd played there our entire lives. That's how it felt. So they were sharing ammo between the games as well. We just felt incredibly welcome there. And they, I, they just have a top-notch community up there. I'm... Never seen anything like it, so that, that was such a great atmosphere throughout the day. Um, as for hit taking then, aside from one instance where I quite clearly quad tapped a guy in the chest, um, when I was looking back at my footage, it made clear to me that I actually hit him on his mags several times, so I'm willing to let that slide in that instance, he probably didn't feel anything at all. But aside from that, hit taking was excellent throughout the day, so no qualms there. So what about the side terrain then? Well, even though the woodland is quite flat, it does its absolute damnedest to make sure that you don't notice that. You're going to be playing in a pine forest for most of the day, and as I say, it is quite flat the ground, but there's so much debris around that you have to keep an eye out for it. Yes, you can happily run up and down this place all day, just watch your footing though so you don't trip up over an errant tree root. They've got a lot of buildings and man-made cover on the site as well, such as a downed plain and a small cluster of villages together, so it makes the already large site feel bigger than it is. Uh, most of the trees tend to be quite thick as well, so there's always another option of cover for you to run to. Plenty of options for flanking on this site. There's a small river that runs through the site as well. In reality, it's a large ditch that if you get a decent run up to, you can jump over it with no trouble. But they've got plenty of bridges on site as well to provide solid crossing points. The one bit you really need to look out for though is when the site gets a bit boggy. You can tell you're about to enter it when the ground suddenly gets really mossy. Luckily they don't play much in this area and the bit they did use was more dried out, but I try to avoid that part if you can. Even though a significant part of the site is boggy terrain, the rest that they have on offer is more than enough to keep you entertained and it always feels like you have somewhere new to fight during the games. So onto the games then, what were we playing throughout the day? 
Well, the first two games were a simple attack games. Defenders had one medic and then they were out. Attackers had unlimited regen and whichever team managed to clear the defending team first was the winner. Very simple, very effective. It got people into the mood quite quickly. So very effective first game with that. The next one was a bomb defusal game. Now, credit to this one because this was the single best bomb prop I've ever seen at an airsoft site. It had a full case and everything with a little tablet inside it and it had a code that you had to enter in order to change which timer was running down. So the bomb was in a building and defenders had to hold it for 15 minutes. Attackers had to get to the bomb, enter the code, and then it would start counting down a separate seven minute timer. If the defenders could retake it and enter the code again, it would go back to the original 15. So the winner was whichever team managed to run down the timer. Um, although both teams were on constant regen, the defenders had a bit further to run to get to the site. So there was always fast pace action in there. It was never just a case of camping on the room. And both teams were actually able to see into the bomb room for their starting points. So you had to clear all the guys on the outside before making a move on it. But the bomb changed hands several times during the game, so it really kept the pace up. And it just encouraged people to take risks. So this game played incredibly well, had a great amount of fun with it. Uh, the next game we played was a simple fallback one, where we got to see the rest of the site. Um, so defenders were, even though they were only on hit and out, so one hit gone, um, before they had to go back to the next location, they were really hard to dislodge. Um, this is mainly because the attackers didn't have quite as much cover. We were starting to play on the edge of the boggy parts of the site here. So there was a fair bit of man-made cover, but the trees were really thin. Um, so this made it quite hard for the attackers to make some progress. We could see them coming a mile away. Even if we couldn't hit them at the long range, we could actually know where they were. So there wasn't really that much element of surprise available. Um, in order to make that a little bit quicker, I'd suggest perhaps putting some more man-made cover around those outer laying areas. Um, because the further we got away from the main site, the terrain for the attacking team reduced quite significantly. However, the games did play well regardless. Um, we didn't have a chance to turn that around though, unfortunately, because it took so long to go through. Uh, I think this is mainly due to the fact that it was hard to dislodge the defenders and walking between the various defend points was so long. In reality, it played more like three separate games as opposed to one continuous one. Which, in this instance, I was actually okay with because it, the long wait time between each attack and defend justified itself because of the distance. As I say, just to improve it, just add a touch more man-made cover for the attackers to use. But other than that, excellent game times throughout the day. So ultimately then, would I recommend a visit to Nomad Woodland? Without question, absolutely. I had such a great time at this site. Even though we only went up for a half day, they'd managed to cram so many games into the time that they had that it felt like a full day experience. It was cheap, it was fun, and the people there were just brilliant, frankly. Um, in terms of improvements, well, maybe a bit more man-made cover in the more boggy areas of the site, but that's just a potential improvement really, it's not really anything wrong with the site, it's quite hard for me to find flaws with the experience that I had that day, because it was just so thoroughly enjoyable, I'm actually really disappointed that it's such a long drive for me to get up there, otherwise I would easily make this my local go-to site, so even though it's vastly out of the area I usually play, and if anyone's heading up that way, I highly recommend this site, I had a great time. Now, I really hope you've enjoyed my video review of the Nomad Woodland Airsoft sites. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, feedback you'd like to give, maybe you want to share your own experiences of the site, leave it in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft.